Hello and welcome to another video here on AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton, I'm the site editor. I'm also a trained ISF and THX calibrator. And in today's video, we're going to look at the Philips OLED Plus 936 and the Philips OLED 806 TVs. And we're going to look at the best settings out of the box for both of these models. Uh, they are identical settings for either model, so uh, you can use either of them. Uh, these are the best out of the box settings. Uh, so these are not calibration settings, uh, but these are the best settings out of the box for watching content as it's intended and mastered. So this is how it's intended to be seen and mastered. If you want to watch content um, as the creator intended, these are the best settings out of the box for that, where you'll get all the detail uh, and the correct colors and so on. So we're going to go into the menu system. We're going to click on frequent settings and then we're going to click on all settings. And this brings us to the picture menu. We're going to move over to the picture style. And then we're going to go to filmmaker mode, which is already highlighted here. Uh, so there are quite a few uh, picture modes in here, as well as the Kalman for AutoCal, which is not working at the moment at the time that we reviewed the TV. Uh, but this will be coming very soon. You also have your two ISF modes there. Uh, but we're going to go to filmmaker mode because this is the best out of the box one button press picture mode. Uh, because it switches all the unnecessary picture processing off. It sets the colours correctly for Rec. 709 for HD video. It uh, also sets the white balance correctly for D65 white. Uh, so this is what we want uh, for watching SDR content. So we're selecting Filmmaker mode. And then it's just a case of going through and just making sure uh, that all the settings are correct. And basically that means that everything is switched off. So we're just going to go through all of these settings, making sure that uh, they're all set correctly, uh, any enhancement settings are set to off, colour gamut is normal, colour temperature is warm which is the D65 setting. Uh, we don't need to go into white point alignment, uh, you would need to have a meter and software to set that correctly so we're going to leave that alone. They are set uh, as best as possible out of the box in filmmaker mode. Uh, we're going to go over to the contrast settings and again these should all be switched off we don't want any enhancements uh, we just want to watch the signal as it was intended to be seen so yeah uh, so everything switched off here perfect contrast off and the light sensor off and then gamma uh, you need to set this to plus four uh, for it to be 2.4 or bt1886 compliant uh, if it's set to zero it's 2.2 uh, so if you're in a darker room uh, you want that plus four that gives you uh, BT1886 or 2.4 gamma. We're then going to go into motion. Now, normally I would tell you to switch motion off, but actually pure cinema uh, selection here is the correct one. Um, that sets the pull down correct for 24 frames per second material. Uh, it gives it a 5.5 five pull down. Uh, you could also use movie if you um, do see a judder uh, with 24 frames per second material, even with 5.5 five pull down. Uh, movie setting, it adds a little bit of interpolation in there, basically to get around the sample and hold of an OLED panel uh, and get rid of that judder. I've tried it, I can see the interpolation is on there, I can see so proper effect, but it is very mild and for the majority of people you probably get around that and not see it, but Pure Cinema is the one that we would recommend and then everything else is greyed out. Apart from fast motion clarity, this is black frame insertion. Again, you can use this. It will dim the screen slightly uh, when you do use it. We would select uh, minimum and suggest that you use minimum. Uh, that does perceivably enhance the uh, the resolution, um, so you can see more lines of resolution. Do not use it with HDR material because it will knock 100, 150 nits off uh, your peak brightness if you do that. Um, so it's up to you whether you, uh, there is no right and wrong when it comes to black frame insertion. Just be aware it does cut down the brightness slightly. So that's all the settings out of the box that we need for SDR content. Uh, next, we're gonna go to HDR10. So we're moving over to HDR10. We're feeding the TV uh, HDR10 signal from the Spears Mansell disc. Uh, you can find HDR10 content on streaming services. Uh, you need to be sending an HDR10 signal to the TV uh, to make these changes. So we're gonna go in again, frequent settings, all settings. And we're going to go to the picture style and again we're going to choose HDR filmmaker mode. Now again this should in theory, I haven't been through this menu just yet, the TV's fresh out of the box, uh, this should be the best setting out of the box um, and it should switch all unnecessary processing off and it should also follow the ST2084 standard for PQ EOTF 
uh, for HDR so you get the correct curve uh, when it comes to HDR content. So we're just going to check that everything is set correctly and uh, most of the things that are need to be switched off are switched off. So noise reduction, that's all switched off. We go into sharpness, ultra resolution, switched off. The color enhancement is switched off. We're in warm, which is the correct white point for HDR10, which is D65, the same as SDR content. Uh, contrast settings, so we want to be in maximum there. That is the default out of the box. Um, that gives the panel the most brightness. Uh, it doesn't clip detail either. Uh, that's perfect. And talking about perfect, HDR perfect. Now set to minimum, uh, that will tone map when it gets a 1000 or 4000 nit content. If there's no metadata in the content to tell it it's 1000 or 4000 nit, uh, then you might want to go to medium. Uh, medium uh, gives it a, a better roll off, uh, a nice roll off, so it keeps detail uh, and it should then tone map correctly if there's no metadata on the content that you're watching. Switching it off for HDIG, uh, that basically gets rid of the set's tone mapping and it just has introduces a hard clip at the peak brightness of the set. It's more for professional use um, or use with a game console. Um, so you need to make sure that those are set correctly in HDR Perfect. Down to video contrast 100, uh, sensor switched off and gamma, we leave gamma alone uh, because it is following uh, the PQE OTF correctly. Uh, and then motion, once again, um, you can go in here. For some reason, this is set to movie, um, which we don't want because it adds a little bit of interpolation. We want pure cinema to see it correctly. For some reason, that was defaulting to movie. So again, it is important just to quickly go through these settings. And then when it comes to fast motion clarity, again, we want that switched off. That's black frame insertion. You do not want to use it with HDR content. So that's all the settings there for HDR10. Next, we'll go to Dolby Vision. So next we move on to Dolby Vision content. Again, we are feeding this a uh, TV, a Dolby Vision signal. It's from the Spears and Mansell disc, but again, you can find Dolby Vision material on Netflix and Disney Plus and other streaming services. So you can find the content, uh, feed the content into the TV, and then you'll be able to adjust these settings. You won't be able to do it um, if you're not sending the TV the correct signal. So we're gonna go in frequent settings once again, all settings, and again, we're gonna go over a picture style and it defaults to Dolby Vision Dark, which is the correct setting. This is the Dolby Vision setting where it switches everything off a bit like Filmmaker mode. Um, so you're seeing the content as it was mastered and intended to be seen. Dolby Vision Bright on a Philips TV adds all sorts of picture processing and noise reduction and everything else uh, along with Dolby Vision games. So you need to go in and pay a bit more attention if you're gonna use those and switch the things off. Uh, that are going to scrub detail and so on but we're going to use Dolby Vision Dark for movie viewing and this is the best setting like I say out of the box that's going to get you towards how the content was mastered and intended to be seen so again all we need to do here is just go through and double check that everything is set correctly and it should be out of the box uh, we go across to the noise reduction and it's all switched off sharpness uh, should be switched off and it is uh, these are all greyed out be, uh, apart from colour temperature and white point alignment because if you uh, can calibrate then you, you have the correct gear you can calibrate the white point but it should be D65 out of the box uh, and it is on this TV. Again uh, a lot of these are greyed out like HDR perfect and so on. Um, these are set as default out of the box in Dolby Vision Dark um, and again it's Dolby Vision so we don't want to be adding anything in here especially Gamma we don't want to be messing with any of that so there you go. Uh, motion, motion styles, pure cinema is the correct setting for that one as well for uh, adding in 5.5 pull down and of course fast motion clarity is black frame insertion and it should be switched off. You do not want that on with HDR content otherwise you lose 100, 150 nits from your peak brightness and that is all the settings for Dolby Vision. If you've enjoyed this video, if it's been useful then please do consider uh, subscribing to the channel and give the video a like and we'll be back with more settings videos very soon thanks for watching <laughs>